Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan and in today's video we'll use photogrammetry to get a 3D model of our own face. Why would you want to do this? Well, for example, you can create some pretty interesting renders just like these ones. And with that said, let's get started. To easily get the needed photos, we can use a video camera. You'll want to hold it far enough away from your face and then just move it up and down and left and right to capture every angle. Make sure to not go too fast because rolling shutter and motion blur can mess up the final model. Also, try to keep your head as straight as possible and do not move it, so your photogrammetry program will not have any trouble calculating your scene. Once the video is made, load up Blender and import your video clip. To do this, let's go to Video Sequencer, choose Sequencer slash Preview and now go to Add Movie and select your clip. With the clip imported, we can delete the bottom layer because this layer only holds audio information. Next up, we want to set the start and end frame accordingly. So, go to where you want your image sequence to start and just copy and paste the current frame into your start frame and do the same thing for your end frame. Now, with that done, you can see that my face only takes up maybe one third of the image. So, with the clip selected, we can go into the end panel, choose crop and crop the image left and right. You can now also go into your dimensions tab right here and now change the X resolution as well as your crop ratio until the video fits in the new resolution. You can also use your transform options to further fine tune this. By doing this we will get a smaller file size so our photogrammetry software will have an easier time calculating our model. Now under color management right here we want to choose standard as our view transform to keep the original colors. You can now also play around with maybe the exposure or gamma or even contrast if you have log footage like me. And as a last step, we need to choose a step value. This setting controls how many frames will be skipped when rendering. A step value of 10 means that every 10th frame will be rendered. So in my case, a step value of 10 will do just fine. If you have a shorter video, maybe turn down your step value and if you have a very long video, turn it up. With an output folder selected, press Ctrl and F12 to render out your images. I have already done this, so we can now import these images into our photogrammetry software. For this video I'll use Reality Capture, for which you can currently get 8000 free credits when migrating your current account to an Epic Games one. With Reality Capture open, we can go ahead and drag and drop our image sequence into this panel. With the image sequence ready, we can go to Alignment and click on Align Images. This will take a few seconds and calculate a point cloud of our model. And you can see that in my case only half of the face got calculated because apparently I have too few photos. But still this will work for some interesting renders so let's calculate our model. Let's go over to reconstruction and click on normal detail. Higher detail models almost all of the time have too many faces so normally I just go with normal detail. And now you can see that half of my face got reconstructed. For a better result I would go ahead and reshoot my video. But this will do just fine for this video. And because I do not need any textures for my final render, I will just go to model and export the obj file. Once the model is imported, we need to rotate it negative 90 degrees on the x-axis and possibly also scale it down, because it is way too big. Great! We can now start to clean up our model. A good step is always to delete all of these unnecessary faces on the outside. For my final render I used micro displacement. If you want to do this I would highly recommend to first remesh this model. In this case the Quadri Flow remesher works great. You can search for it by pressing F3 and then just type in remesh. And for this model I'll use a value of 75,000 faces. And you can see that now our model looks a lot cleaner and everything is made out of polygons. We should now be able to just use a subdivision surface modifier in experimental mode and turn on adaptive subdivisions. And yeah, that's basically it. The rest of the thumbnail render is just a harsh top light and two fingerprint textures, one fed into the normal map of a principled BSTF shader and the other one fed into the displacement socket. So if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing and we'll see each other in the next video next Saturday.